Hello and welcome to Vancouver Carpenter. Today I'm going to teach you guys how to find a stud in a wall without a stud finder. So I've spent the majority of my career without using a stud finder because either A, I can't find it, or B, I don't have charged batteries. So I have a lot of methods just based on my general construction knowledge that help me find the studs really easily. So there's a handful of things you might want to have on hand to make this job easier. So a roll of tape for marking the wall if you don't want to mark your wall with a pencil. I like to use a nail to find the studs, so a very small nail. This is inch and a half. I don't know the gauge, but it leaves a very small hole in the wall. Got a little bit of caulking for repairing the hole in the wall. I've got my son's hammer, so I've got this teeny little hammer, but any hammer will do. A tape measure and a pencil. Okay, first let's go to that primeval method that you've seen every contractor do and wondered why the heck they're doing that. The old thump on the wall. So I'm going to tell you how that works because before I knew about how to find it by thumping on the wall, I always assumed that what people were doing was listening for the change in the sound, and I could never hear a change in the sound. So you're actually not listening, what you're doing is feeling. So there's a big difference. When you're pounding on this wall, there is a bit of a change in the sound, but more so, what you're going to notice is, so studs are spaced usually 16 inches apart. So that's roughly this far. And so for about 16 inches, you can feel it's hollow behind it. And then as you're pounding on it, it'll actually get quite hard feeling. Enough that if you're hitting really hard, it actually kind of hurts your fist. But anyways, let's find one here. So that's empty. That's clearly one right here. So I'm going to put a little piece of tape on the wall right here. Better get the tape ready so I can find it this time. That's it, right there. So there's no furniture covering this, so I'm not going to poke a hole in the wall to try and find it right here. But what I'm going to do is measure from the inside corner of the wall and check down by the baseboard. And I'm going to show you guys a little trick. And this will work, especially if you have white baseboards. So first, let's measure from the corner. So it is 46 and 3 quarters, roughly. So let's remember that. 46 and 3 quarters. Okay, so roll out your tape measure and make sure you're not on the baseboard or it's going to be further out this way. But roll out your tape measure and let's very quickly mark 46 and 3 quarters with a very tiny line. Well, let's hope I got it. Now, studs can vary like this from top to bottom, but this is a pretty good way to check. So I'm doing it right in the corner, right where. Okay, so I'm off a bit, so, but I can feel that I was just to the left a tiny bit. That's it for sure, because it stopped. And so the other thing I know now is that the edge of it is somewhere in here. So if you're not afraid to make another hole, what you can do is you can go even a bit further this way. So that went right in. So now I know that my stud is actually right in here. And so that this is probably the center right there. So now I can check again. And I know actually it wasn't 46 and 3 quarters. It was 47 and a half. But it was pretty close. And this is a pretty good way to do it and not leave much damage. Then when you're done, you can put a little bit of caulking on each one of these. And I love these squeeze tubes just for little stuff. Just keep them around. And so those are now pretty indiscriminate. Someone would have to get on their hands and knees to find that. And if you do this behind furniture, even better. So that's one method for finding it. And part of the reason I like to use a nail is because nails are less likely to puncture something if it goes in. So if you use a screw, like, like a regular screw, there's a good chance that that can thread itself into a pipe or a wire. Or if you also use like a regular drill bit on a drill, there's a good chance that that can also drill right into a pipe or a wire. And this, if God forbid there is actually a pipe or a wire that close to the drywall, this is going to 
more likely push it to one side or the other or you'll feel a bit of resistance. So I find these safer and I'm speaking from experience. I've put both drill bits and screws into pipes and it sucks. Okay, let's get on to the next method of finding a stud. And this is the one that I do most often. So what I do is I look for the outlets. So this one on this wall is simple. It's really easy. So as long as you know how a wall is built, that it's made up of a bunch of framing members stood up on end, then the next thing you need to know is that electrical boxes are almost always mounted to a stud. So the reason this one's so easy is because you've got one here and one here. So guaranteed there's one running right down the center there. So let's see actually if that's on the 16 inch layout with the hole we've already made. Yes it is. So this is exactly 16 inches away from the hole I've already made. So that's an easy one because it's on both sides but it's not always that easy to tell. But let's really quickly check if I can find one up here because I have a mirror usually hanging here so I can afford to make a little hole right here. So that is 31 and a half to the center. So 31 and a half is right here. And now measuring 16 inches away, oh, right here, 48. Let's see if there's a stud there. Yeah, one right there. So it's just using simple math and construction knowledge, you can find these really easily. So let's check another wall where we don't have one on both sides of the stud. So here we have one that we don't know which side it's mounted to. Okay, so I can do the pounding test. They both feel kind of the same. I suspect it's on this side, but I could be wrong. And I don't feel like making a hole in my wall to find out. So here's another thing that I'm going to do. I'm also going to look for a screw pop. So unless you've got a perfect wall that's just been done yesterday, you can often find a screw pop in the walls that look like these. Now it's also possible that that screw pop is not a screw pop, but just a blister. So just a little bit of blistered drywall paper tape, not paper tape, but the actual paper of the surface of the drywall. It can come loose and form a little blister. So here's another little tip of how to find the studs. Magnets. So you can take a magnet, look for that screw pop, and there you have it. It's going to stick right to it. Now that I know where this is, and knowing that most walls are 16 inches, what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure which side is it on. So I believe it is on this side, like I guessed. Now, up above here, I have another mirror hanging most of the time. So I can afford to check up here, behind the mirror. So I'm now going to measure from this direction, 90 inches. So 90 inches from that wall, where are we, right here. So I've made a little mark right there. Yep, there we have it. And if you want to make sure that you actually have the center of it, Again, you can do that little test where you test about one inch on each side. So nothing there, an inch on this side. So I'm still hitting something there and that's an inch over from my original mark. So what that tells me is that my stud is actually more centered between my original mark and this nail. So I can make a little line and I now know the center of my stud. Now once you've found one of your studs, what you can then do is you can lay your tape measure out along that line or you can hook it onto the nail you have in the wall and then you can mark 16 inches or 24 inches or some other random number that somebody chose. Now that's not foolproof. You're not going to find every single stud in a row if their layout is off or it changes somewhere down the wall. But generally it's a very effective method for finding studs. I use it all the time and I haven't had a functioning stud finder in a long time because I am one. So very quickly let's bring up lath and plaster because that is a little bit different because what lath and plaster is is it's going to be 16 inch studs usually and then you're going to have strips of wood, quarter inch thick strips of wood running all the way across the wall. 
So if you're just using the nail, sometimes it's going to feel like there's resistance. But when you're banging on the nail and it's not close to the stud, it's going to sort of bounce in and bounce back out a little bit, but it will actually go through eventually. So if you have lath and plaster walls, you might actually want to use a drill and a screw and you're going to get the same thing. So when it's just the lath and plaster, it's going to go in very easily and not have much resistance. If you've hit a stud, you're going to feel the torque on the drill start to bog down. It's going to have more resistance and you'll know you're in a stud. But with lath and plaster walls, I wouldn't recommend banging on the wall because you could loosen the back of the plaster, thereby weakening it. And even pounding the nail in over time can do that. So when I do this on lath and plaster, it's usually if I'm going to be sheetrocking over top of the plaster. This same method will also work for finding steel studs too. It's just still a solid thing in behind the drywall. So to go over that one more time, look for outlets, look for screw pops, learn how the wall feels different when you're pounding on it. And I'm sure you'll be able to find those studs. It's pretty simple. So thanks for watching Vancouver Carpenter. If you're having a hard time finding those studs, I hope this helps. Anyways, thanks for watching guys. Hope your project's going well. Until the next video.